it must have broken Jonas's heart to have to write that word, mister. Well, you wouldn't say old Jojo exactly likes Larry, would you? No, but I'd say he'd gladly eat one of Larry's eyes as he would a cherry. <laughs> he picked a great time to get us out of bed. Yeah, me with tickets to the opening game. Oh, don't let that worry you. Larry will never get here on time. And old Jojo will dynamite this building. Pardon me, am I in the right room? No, the morgue is downstairs. Uh, I was looking for Mr. Jonas. Oh, you want Mr. Jonas? Well, he's right through that door, son. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's all right. In the words of the immortal poet, I wonder who that lug is. What immortal poet? Shakespeare. Oh, what paper is he on? Why, Larry, oh. you're almost on time. Mr. Doyle, you're Mr. Today, you know. You've cost me a very pleasant afternoon. Is Jonas going through with the presentation? Uh -huh. Yes, you lucky hound. There he is. Where is that Doyle? Well, here I am, Chief. Oh, well, my dear boy. Congratulations. Why, well, I beg your pardon. This is the uh, secretary to the police commissioner. Uh, the new secretary. Congratulations, sir. Oh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Whistler. Uh, T. Fulton Whistler. Oh, thank you, Mr. Whittier. Uh, uh, Whistler. Uh, when you're ready, Mr. Doyle. Um, on behalf of the police commissioner, Mr. P. Blenheim Durkin. Well, I thought it was just plain Pete Durkin. When did he start parting his name in the middle? Well, send me in a photographer. What? Of course with flashes. What did you think, with a ham sandwich? <clears throat> on behalf of our commissioner, I'm here to thank Mr. Lawrence Doyle for his highly commendable work in solving the recent Padrani case. I especially extol his zeal, efficiency, repertorial sagacity, and civic spirit. Mr. Doyle, though by proxy, the commissioner and the police department shake your hand. Well, thank you, Mr. Whittler. Uh, no, Whistler. Whistler. Uh, that's fine. Now then, you fellas take a look at a real newspaper man. And the I hear you run me, Chief. That was yesterday. I just got the message. Well, now you just get this one. Get a flash of Doyle, then get your check and get out of this office. You're through. Oh, yes, Chief. Get it. <clears throat> wait a minute, wait a minute. Where, where's the gun? Oh, yes, the gift. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, the physical token of the commissioner's esteem. Larry, hold it. Hold the gun up high, Larry. That's it. Hold it. One more. No, 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 that's enough. Okay, Now, now, wait a minute, that's enough. Now, get that back in your face. Hold it, kid. Thanks, kid. Go on, now, put a rush on those. Okay, Chief. Hey, how about my job? What's the matter with it? Nothing. I like it. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> now then, you guys, hop to it. And now, Whalen, it's a nice addition. Give me a half column of that cut. Oh, my dear Mr. Whistler, do you have to leave? Oh, no, no. Oh, I see. Well, recreation period is over, so I'll say, uh, well, congratulations on your work in the uh, Shaw murder case. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Whittier. No, Whistler. Whistler, Whistler. Oh, Whistler. Oh, yes, I've seen your mother's picture. Uh, my best wishes to the commissioner. Yes, sir. Goodbye. What are you doing standing there? I'm a good listener. Well, why don't you try being a good newspaper man? Now, the lot of you, get out of here before the mayor walks in and presents me with a machine gun because I'd start using it. You know, Chief, I think everybody's wrong about you. You're all right. Yeah, who wired you to that? You did, when you made that crack about me being a good newspaper man? It was just a crack. Oh. You didn't take it seriously, did you? No. Well, don't. I won't. That's fine. You're good when you're good, that's all. Well, this Upshaw case, okay. How about a couple of others? Well, I brought them in, didn't I? Don't forget I gave you the brakes. Oh, I see. Well, maybe you should have fired me. Maybe I should have. Maybe I will one of these days. Meanwhile, I'm trying to give you another break, Mr. Doyle. It's a honey, isn't it? Someday I'm going to use it. Got your man picked out? Yeah, I'm going to get me a managing editor. Wait a minute. No speeches with this. The boss handed me this to hand to you. Don't open it in here. A good story might hop out of it, and I'd have to get a good man to write it. Chief, when you grow up, people may get to like you. <laughs> I got a hold of a paradise once from New Orleans. Doesn't mean a thing, fellas. 
I've got the key to 15 cities. I've got the day off. Oh, another present from JoJo? No, I'm taking it. Uh, let's see the gun, huh? Oh, special 45. How much you think we could get up? What do you mean, we? Do you think I'd hock this token of esteem from T. Whitty or Whipple Tree? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. We always split, don't we? Ah, we don't have to. The Padroni case gave us this. What is it? I'm no authority. Well, it says on this little piece of paper that the government will redeem it for $50. That's an estate. No, it's a bonus, part of the mystery case. And I got an idea that it's real. If so, let's do something about it. Well, now you're talking. What are we waiting hey, for? Wait a minute. Look, fellas, can't we make it tomorrow? I've got a date. Now, tut, tut, Larry. You know, you mustn't be childish right this way. Never mind. Right right tomorrow, what you can do today. Oh, 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 oh. Ah. Here you go, Jim. Here they come. Bourbon and soda. This is mine. Now, I'm gonna be big. Oh, oh, right. All right, boys, stop breaking your arms. Your fumbling is well meant, but inasmuch as I'm the only one that has any dough, I'll buy it. There you are. Thank you very much. I'll take the next one. Gentlemen, if I may allude to you as such, I think a toast is in order. I agree. To Larry. To Larry, to Larry. wizard of the fourth estate. Track her down, a vicious criminal. Thank you, gentlemen, thank you. But I espouse an even worthier personality. Oh, come, come, Larry, me boy. Let's keep Superman out of this. Ah, this is not Superman, although he thinks he is. I refer to none other than L1A Jonas. Better known as Jojo the dog. Jojo the dog. Jojo the dog. He is a phony, gentlemen. Likewise, a stinker of the first water. By your tone, young fellow, my lad, I take it you're not overly fond of our Mr. Jonas. You take it right, the big walrus. He's not a man, he's a robot with no soul. A leering misanthrope in whose breast the milk of human kindness soured long ago. Ah, I'm beginning to get the picture. He builds you up, then he tears you down with glee. But he's walked on me for the last time. I don't mind telling you, gentlemen, that I'm leaving that misbegotten weasel flat. Those are the best words I've heard in months, Joel. <laughs> Hello, Chief. Just talking about you. Yeah, I can see it's a mistake to let a newspaper man get a hold of $50 at one time. Oh, now listen, Chief Larry was... I may be old-fashioned, but somehow I like to run a newspaper from a newspaper office. Oh, yeah, but Chief... You I... three be in the office tomorrow morning on time, sober or else. And as for you, and I'll show you I can run a newspaper without you. You mean I'm, I'm through? Yeah. Fired. And for the last time. Nice going, kid. You sure told him. Yeah, didn't I? Where? Star reporter rewarded for capturing Louis Padroni. I'd like to get my hands on that monkey. I'd give him a reward he'd never forget. Yeah, and he'd have it coming to him, too. He sure would. Ah, shut up. You make me sick, both of you. What's the matter? What'd we do? We was only sympathizing. Sympathizing? If you two monkeys that have been on your toes, Doyle had never been able to pin this rap on me in the first place. Can we help it if he's smart? Yeah, that Doyle ain't no stooge. He knows plenty. He knows too much. If he ever gets on the witness stand at that trial, I'm cooked. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Looks bad, don't it? You're right at the peak of your career, too. My career's not over yet. Don't forget that. No? Because he's not going to testify at that trial. He ain't. No kidding. What'd I tell you? The boss is foxy. Always got a quick one up his sleeve, ain't you, boss? What are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything. You are. We well, yeah. are. Like what? What do you think? Get him out of the way. You mean like the old days with all the trimmings? I don't care how you do it. Just fix it so he don't show up at that trial. Now, come on, get going. Ain't you coming with us? Not this time. You mean you want us to do it alone? Yeah. I gotta get out of town, pull a couple of quick jobs, get enough of the trial expenses. You know the boss. Yes, sir, boys. My heart goes out to you. You poor wage slaves languishing under the heel of old Jojo the Taskmaster. While I live the free life again. Gambling on the green pastures, hearkening only to the call of Mother Nature. You are on the phone, Mr. Doyle. Mother Nature. She seems a little previous. Oh, it's probably some gal calling me up for a date. <laughs> well, I'll be back in a flash with a blonde. Oh. Hello, Larry. Oh. Hello, fellas. Hey, wait a minute. Where are we going? Not far. Well, well I got a phone call. It will keep. Hey, this sort of thing won't get you fellas anywhere. 
You know what the penalty is for kidnapping, don't you? This is a kidnapping, isn't it? We say it was. Well, what do you mean? You're not going to knock me off, are you? Well, well, you wouldn't do that. What could you gain by it? Huh? What, what could you gain by it? Oh, now, look, Goldie, you're a nice fella. Yeah, I like you, too. Well, thanks. Well, let's be reasonable. I know I got your pal Padroni in a jam, but that's no reason for you two to be sore at me. All right, so you're sore. But why should you do his dirty work? This ain't dirty work. We think it's fun. Fun? What's, what's fun about knocking off a nice guy that never did anything in his life to you? What kind of fellas are you? You talk too much. Aren't you going pretty fast? You might get a ticket. If we do, you can square it. Yeah, they tell me you reporters have a way with the cops. You think not? Did you read the record today? Yeah, what about it? What about it? Didn't you see what the police commissioner thinks of me? Why, he practically gave me the keys to the jail, that's all. Why, I'm their pal. I know every cop on the beat by his first name. And you can't kill a cop's pal and get away with it. They never rest until they strap you in the electric chair. You're pretty sure of that, ain't you? Yeah, why shouldn't I be? You know what's happened to every other guy who knocked off a newspaper man? Well, they'll grab you the same way. Uh, you can't play with the star reporter of the record. It's suicide. Ah, uh, Goldie, what you want to go and do that for? Couldn't you wait till we was out of town? I didn't like the way he was running off. You know, there might be something in what he says. You mean about the reporters and the cops and all of that? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Just like you said, them reporters has got away with the cops. Yeah. You know, Petroni didn't say nothing about killing this monkey. He just said to get rid of him, didn't he? That's right. That's all he said. What do we do with him? Ship him out of town? Yeah. Why not? Let's see how much dough he's holding. Thirty-nine bucks. That ought to do it. Head to the depot. He's got a snoot full, hasn't he? Wouldn't he be more comfortable if you just shipped him in a box? Are you trying to be funny? He wants a one-way ticket. Yes, sir. Where to? Uh, uh Springfield. Springfield? Or Springfield, Massachusetts? Illinois? Ohio? North Carolina, Wisconsin, or Alabama? Which is the cheapest? Cheapest. Now, we have the Rock Island to Springfield, Illinois, the B&O to Springfield, Ohio, and the Pennsylvania... To Never mind. Make it St. Louis. It's less complicated. St. Louis? You said free? St. Louis. Yes, sir. St. Louis. Well, here we are, gentlemen. Compartment A. Man, that's what I'd call being done up down. Yeah, he's been drinking a little. Yes, sir. Quite a little. I ain't been in that shape since the night of my last match. Man, what a night. Is that this gentleman's trouble? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to St. Louis to get married. Oh, man. I don't blame him for getting himself emerged. I never will forget my first wife. Man, what a woman. You know what that woman done? She All right, George. Some other time when we can stay longer. Yeah. Here you go. See that he gets off where he's supposed to. Yes, sir. Let's go. Uh, pardon me, gentlemen. Uh, can I brush you gentlemen off? No, we'll get off the regular way. Yeah. Oh, man. Good morning, sir. Well, we're getting into St. Louis. St. St. Louis what? The one in Missouri. What for? What for what? What? My ticket read St. Louis? That's right. Hey, I don't get it. How did I get on this train? You was brung aboard last night in Chicago. And, mister, when I said brung, you was really brung. Yes, sir. Oh, I, I was with somebody, huh? Yes, sir. The bridal party. The bridal party? Yes, sir. Surely you remember. No, I don't. I draw a blank. 
Well, here we is. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, but you'll have to change this dollar. Oh, that's all right, sir. You fixed me up last night. I did? Oh, yeah. I give up. Uh, I, I suppose a little lady will be there to meet us. Little lady? Oh, you can't fool me. I knew it last night you was coming to St. Louis to get mad. Oh. Twenty-five cents. That's what it adds up. Ten cents for coffee. It's never more than five. Well, it's ten here. And the donuts, you can get them anywhere for a nickel. We get five cents straight, three for fifteen. I served them and you ate them, so the check's twenty-five cents. Look. All I've got is a nickel and five pennies. Honest, that's all I've got. Well, I gotta pay the difference for you for niggle me out of it. Don't you believe me? For the gags they pull on me, I don't believe nobody. Uh, waiter, another cup. <laughs> Forget it. I can tell a lady when I see one. Oh, gee, thank you very much. That's all right. Going to Mrs. Allen Weston, 659 South Eden Street, Helena, Montana. Am at Union Station, St. Louis. Need enough money for fare. Please send me that and what you can spare. Things are difficult. Signed, Anne. That's right. Tell you to collect, please. What's your name? Ann Weston. It's to my mother. Any identification? Oh, no. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I can't send it. Oh, but it's to my mother. But we don't know your mother. Oh, I see, of course. Sorry. That's all right. Collect. Any identification? Yeah, my press card. L1 A. Jonas, managing editor, Chicago Records, Chicago, Illinois. Need two hundred dollars urgently. Prospects good, but in a jam. Regards to you and the gang. Reply Union Station, St. Louis, Larry Doyle. Isn't there something I can do for you? No, thank you. I'm not interested. Well, that's telling me. Hey, you big sap, come back here now. Thanks. When you see a driver like that, it makes you want to be a judge. Everything all right? With us, yes. But how come you let a driver like that get away? Well, I whistled, didn't I? Well, everything's all right, officer. Everything isn't all right. That guy came around the... That driver didn't uh, give me an argument. He went right on his way. Well, that's what burns me up. Do you and the lady want to get down to the station with me and make a complaint? Yes. Oh, no, officer, no. Well, you can't let a guy like that get away, Mike. My... Don't you know that you can't win an argument with the wife? Yeah, but sometimes a good smack does them good, huh? <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. I'm going to have to carry you across the next street. You might jump in front of another car. Look, I'm very grateful for what you did, but please leave me alone. Oh, you can't be trusted out of law. You can give that officer advice, but don't give me any. It was funny about that missus stuff, wasn't it? No. I think it was. You know, I was right about you needing a smack sometimes, Why too. Why, you? Hey, you're prettier than ever when you're mad. Either you leave me alone, or I'll call an officer and tell him you're annoying me. Would you do that? Yes. Yeah, I think you would. Well, okay, I'm sorry. So I'm beautiful. Miss me? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like your laugh. Does this go on all day? Unless we find some place to lie. What am I gonna do with you? Now look, you're not kidding me. You haven't any more place to go than a rabbit. Well, neither have I. But I'm not leaving you until I know you're all right. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. Oh, but I do. Ever since that car missed you and you threw yourself into my arms. Oh, I did not. It looked that way to me. But you grabbed me. I couldn't help that. 
you didn't have to kiss me as a reward for grabbing you. I did what? Well, you just didn't think of it. It would have been a great idea. Oh, come on now. You're up against it, aren't you? Well, so am I. But if you're willing to take a chance, I'll get us both out of this spot. What do you mean, take a chance? Well, now look. There are a lot of fellas in this world who know a nice girl when they see one. I'm one of those guys. I may be a little crude in my methods, but I come from a family with hearts of gold. Now, here are you, and here am I. And we have one bag between us. Well, that bag will get us into a good hotel. I'll see that you get a good room, a good meal, and a good night's rest. I'll get some sleep myself because I won't be worrying about you. Now, what do you say? No. Oh, please, now, well, let me Give take me my bag. bag. Oh, good. What, look what you've done with all my things. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, a nice day, officer. Who says so? I do. I think it's a lovely day. <laughs> Well, there's nothing like picking the best. Now turn on that smile while I do the dickering. And if I'm not doing all right, laugh. That'll murder the clerk. It killed me. <laughs> and no matter what I tell him, play straight for me. Then we'll be all set and we'll have some champagne and roast pheasant and, well, hamburger. And tomorrow's another day. You trust me, don't you? I trust you. Okay. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Just the two of you? Yes, that's all right. I can give you a very nice room on the third floor. Ten dollars a day. Twin beds, tub and shower. Oh, you're not talking my language. What did the president have? Oh, you mean the suite. <laughs> now you're talking. Play this straight. Uh, that suite you mentioned, you're sure it's the very best you have? Oh, yes, sir, the finest, the Regal suite. Regal? <laughs> well, that's for us, nothing but the best, eh, little lady? <laughs> this is Mr. Clark, our manager. Mr. and Mrs. Doyle. Oh, no, no, Mr. Larry Doyle and secretary. Oh, I see. Glad to have you with us, Mr. Doyle. Thank you. I'm with the Chicago Record. They've sent me down here to cover the smoke abatement story, and uh, Miss uh, Bonavesic is assisting me. <laughs> of course. Uh, now, I was just telling the clerk we want your best suite. Surely. And how much will that set me back? $35 a day. Oh, well, that's reasonable enough. I'll take it. Now, we only had this one bag with us. Some friends of ours thought it would be funny to steal our others. <laughs> <laughs> Practical jokers, you know how newspaper men are. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid it upset the little lady, but comics will be comics. <laughs> the stuff will be along on the next train. <laughs> we'll take care of it. Uh, thank you. Are you ready, Miss Fonavesic? Oh, let me do the honors. If you don't mind, I'll show you the suite. Oh, thank you. Now, there you see a real hotel man. Oh, I'm expecting a wire. Would you call the railroad station office and have it sent out over here? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. You like this? Oh, yes, it'll do. Don't you think so, Miss Fonavesi? <clears throat> Don't hesitate to ask for anything you want. I won't. Good day. Good day. Well, did I or did I not put that over? You did. I told you I would. You told me I could trust you. I believed you. Well, this is the way to do it. Make them think we're important people. I prefer nice people. Well, we are, and I think we'll be very comfortable here. Hey, now, wait a minute. I played straight, and I kept my part of the bargain. If you don't mind, I think I'll be going. Well, you can't do that. I wasn't fooling. I meant everything I said. Well, I thought you'd understand. I told you there'd be no... Uh... Come here. There's your room. There's mine. I don't think I've ever been so hungry in my life. Yeah, I noticed that in the station dining room. You looked all in. I was all in. I was pretty miserable. I'll tell you something. You know, I couldn't pay my bill. I don't know what I would have done if it hadn't been for the waiter. He trusted me for 15 cents. Yeah, he was all right. You'd never have guessed it, though, by looking at his pan. <laughs> I'm going to see that he gets that 15 cents. Oh, no, I'll take care of that. Oh, no, you won't. I'll do it. I'm your business manager. All right. Now, here's the idea. We've really got nothing to worry about. I wired my old paper for 200 bucks. That's what I sent in the station. And it'll be here by tomorrow at the latest. I'm really expecting it before that. Then we pay this bill and we're on our way. How's that, Ann? How'd you know my name was Ann? Did I hit it? <laughs> oh, now, isn't that funny? I'll tell you how I knew it. You look like an Ann. Well, just what do Ann's look like? Mm, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Thank you very much. This telegram just came in from Mr. Doyle.
I'll take this up myself. It's a cinch, I tell you. Larry Doyle doesn't mean anything to you, naturally. But any good newspaper knows me, so tomorrow I... There you are. Maybe something's happened already. Oh. Good news? Oh, uh, terrific. Just a laugh. Another one of those comedy wires from those pranksters I was telling you about, remember? Do you mind stepping into the hall for a minute? That was a pretty good line of talk you gave me, young fellow. I don't know what your game is and don't care, but it's all over as far as this hotel is concerned. Now get your secretary and get out. Why? Don't tell me you believe this crazy telegram. Why, it's just a gag. Just a practical joke from a bunch of pals of mine. <laughs> Great bunch of kidders, those boys. Yes, sir. Terrific. <laughs> just the same, you're still getting out. Oh, oh, now, come now. You look like an understanding man. You must have a secretary. How would you feel if they threw you two out of this hotel? That's beside the point. Well, you're going to look awfully silly when the Hotel Managers Association finds out that you were duped out of your best suite for a night. Oh, come on now. Give me 24 hours. I'll have everything straightened out by then. Well, all right. I'll give you just 24 hours. But that's all. Not a second more. What do you want? Oh, uh, he's a joker, too. He wanted me to invest money in a new chain of hotels. <laughs> What's in the wire? Oh, it's, it's just a gag. It's kind of funny, too, but it's a little, uh, well, you can't read it to a girl. <laughs> Here's a good laugh for your boys from Larry Doyle, from St. Louis. He's flat and in a jam. Why, it'd be for 200. <laughs> Well, what are you going to do, Chief? I've already done it. Why, I'm nothing doing. I've never even heard of him. Yeah, but he's in a jam. He needn't yell to me. I'm through with him. Just thought you boys might be interested, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can take it from me. The kid's in a jam. How much money you got? I got about three bucks myself. It's two bucks. Good. Well, I haven't got any dough, but I've got an idea. Babies, be good to me tonight. Well, Larry, come on, fellas. Well, filet mignon was fine last night. What do we have for breakfast? You're not even listening to me. I've got it. Look. He's been laying off for several months, but now he's back, and he always works the same. He pulls off a job, then he calls up the district attorney and the newspapers and laughs at them. Now he's pulled his most sensational job, and he's laughing at the police. This is where I go to work. Why, this will be duck soup for me. Uh, won't you give me a little kiss just for good luck? Well, I just thought I'd ask. Now, you hold your breath till I get back. I'm going over to the World News office. Stopping in St. Louis have closed several big deals with more coming up. Trust you took care of that matter as I instructed. Pedroni. Did we take care of that matter like he instructed? <laughs> yeah. I like that sort of look on that smart reporter's pen when he woke up in St. Louis. St. Louis? Something cats, that's where the boss is. St. Louis? If them two of them meets up, the boss will murder us. You're telling me. We gotta grab a plane down there, but quick. doing everything we can, sir. I've got everybody out covering the case, but as usual, he left no clues. I don't care about clues. Either you get that bandit, or I get a new managing editor. Publishers got you on the carpet, huh? Oh, well, what a brilliant piece of luck I am for you. Who are you? Just the best little newspaper man either side of the Rockies, that's all. Get out of here. You want to find that bandit? Yes. Well, I'm the original bandit catcher. My name, Larry Doyle, the one and only. Oh, you've heard of me, Chicago record? Oh, I know what you're thinking. You think I'm a lot of baloney, huh? I do. That I'm a fake, a bluff. Well, I'll show you. Got my press card right here. Someplace I got... 
Oh, I, I, I left it on the counter, the, uh, the girl... Now, get out of here! Oh, so you try and kick me out, huh? Well, you'd be kicking the best newspaper man you ever kicked at. And not only that, but you'd be missing the opportunity of your life. But I'm not going to let you. I'm going to call up my boss and have him identify me. Charges reversed. Oh, he'll pay for it. Well, get me Jonas, the Chicago record. Get Hart for me. I don't care where you've looked, get him. Uh, charges reversed. I look in every gin mill, juke joint, dance hall, the river, any place. And when you find him, tell him to get down to headquarters and see if he can pick up anything on that stick-up man. Hello? Hello, Chief. Larry Doyle. Well, I I'm talking to Marvin of the St. Louis uh, World News. Well, uh, well, a big story has just popped, and I'm telling him I'm the boy to handle it. Yeah. But, but he won't believe I'm Larry Doyle. <laughs> Isn't that a laugh? <laughs> well, uh, tell him about me, will you? Sure, I'll fix it for you. Put Marvin on. Okay. There you are, he'll tell you. This is Marvin talking. Give me the lowdown. Why, he's a fake. If I were you, I'd turn him over to the police. He's lying. Because the real Larry Doyle is sitting here in my office right now. Thanks. Well, he told you, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. That's my boss. Your boss says you're a fake and a liar. The real Larry Doyle is sitting in Jonah's office right now. You're kidding. Now get out of here before I call the cops. That's what Jonah suggested, too. Uh, honestly, I'm Larry Doyle. Look, well, it, get out of here before you tell me you're Damon Runyon. I'm... Here's one editor you can't put anything over on. Yes? That call was $3, Mr. Marvin. What? You can't do that to me. Now, listen, look out and look after that bill, will you? Was everything all right? Is everything all right? Honey, we're all set. I talked to Marvin, the managing editor of the World News, for less than a minute. I told him who I was, and he put me right on the payroll. Oh, Larry, I'm so happy. Thanks. Yeah, I'm riding on top of the world again. Riding on top of the world. Hey, look. You don't have to lie to me. Yeah, I lost out. My old boss let me down. You see, I called him and told him that they didn't believe I was Larry Doyle. Well, he said he'd fix it. He did. He said I wasn't Larry Doyle. It's kind of funny, I guess. It's a shame. It's just a shame. Well, it's all in the breaks. If I'm not licked, I'll show him. I'll show that Jonas. That's the gang. Didn't I tell you something would break? Where'd you know? Well, first off, I'm going to give that hotel manager a piece of my mind. Then prepare to lead the full life we celebrate. Uh, uh... I want words with you, my good man. Words concerning payment of your bill, I hope. Precisely. If this alleged hotel can scrape up enough money to cash a sizable money order. Why, of course, Mr. Doyle. Uh, take care of this for Mr. Doyle. He's paying his bill. Yes, sir. That, my benighted Boniface, is a gross understatement. I am not alone paying my bill. I am checking out. Checking out? But that's impossible. I mean, this is the best hotel in town. Why should you want to leave? You dare to ask me a question like that? Well, I... What's wrong if the service isn't satisfactory, Mr. Doyle? The service is abominable. The food is atrocious. The beds are like slabs in the morgue, and the help is ridiculous. Meaning you, my moon-faced friend. I, I don't know what to say. We've never had a complaint like that before. I'm probably the first customer in the hotel who ever had a vocabulary. But there must be something I can do to make it up to you, Mr. Doyle. Anything you ask. But please, Mr. Doyle, don't leave us. Well, I don't know. All right, I tell you what I'll do. I will give you exactly 24 hours. And if the service hasn't improved by then, out I go. Thank you, Mr. Doyle. Here's your change, Mr. Doyle. Oh, yes, of course. Good day, sir. How large was that money order? Fifty dollars. Only fifty dollars. And I let him sell me that bill of goods. Twenty-four hours. I must be losing my mind. Hello, are there any messages for me? Who is this, please? 
This is Mr. Doyle's secretary, Miss Pernavesic. No, no messages, Miss Pernavesic. Thank you. paid, the manager's doing a lot of bowing, we'll have credit for a couple of days, you're a wonderful kid, and we're broke again. Oh, Larry, you shouldn't have done it. Would you rather I had? No. <laughs> now, let's see, money, 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 money. Where are we going to get some more money? Oh, no, Larry, no. You know a good hawk shop? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, of course I do. One that has all I've got. Well, put on your hat and lead the way. I'll bring up the artillery. Wait. Okay, partner. This is the last one. If he ain't here, he ain't nowhere. Good evening. Hi. You got a guy named Larry Doyle stopping here? Yes, we have. Well, where can we find him? Well, he just left with a young lady. What young lady? With his... Don't son. say it. Why do you think of that? That guy did get married. Yeah, just like... Hey, what are we, psychic? If you hurry, you might be able to catch them. Thanks. Hey, that's them over there. Yeah. Yeah, that's them. I'll lose them. No soap. A cop had to go and barge through. What's the matter with your kid could hit that target? Go ahead. I can't do it, Goldie. His wife got in the way. You don't want me shooting no babe, do you? Pull that trigger, will you? What's a babe? They're a dime a dozen. Yeah, but this one's different. This one's a looker. Yeah? Take a gander for yourself. Boy, what a pip. Yeah. She ain't bad. Ain't bad at all. You're telling me. You know, some guys has all the luck. Now, why can't I line up a doll like that? Stick to business. Will you go ahead? Pull that trigger. I can't do it, Goldie. With them newlyweds and all, it ain't ethical. Supposing they was only married this morning. Cheapers, what a tragedy. Look, it's either him or us. If we don't get Doyle for doing it, he'll get us as sure as you're born. All right. But my heart ain't in it. Boy, what a shot. Hold it, wait a minute. Now look what you went and done. They've gone inside. Yeah, that's what's bothering me. You know whose joint that is, don't you? No. That's Nate's joint. He's one of the biggest fences in the business. So what? There must be something up. Otherwise, what they want to see Nate for? We better forget this bump off for the time being. And find out what this is all about. Yes? Uh, how much? How much you want? Uh, 50 bucks? 15. 40. 20, best I can do. Oh, I wouldn't take less than 35. I wouldn't give more than 25. It's a deal. Put on your name and address right there. Where's a good gambling house? With my luck, I ought to be able to run this into a bankroll. Well, the 13 Club, but we're not going there. Why not? Well, it's rough. Well, serve good food, don't they? I suppose they do. That's what I want. Do you mind? No. <laughs> after a steak or two, I think better. I think you pretty well right now. Yeah, but you ought to see me after a good meal. Ideas just pop. Well, I guess you've heard it. Come on. <laughs> Hello, 
Hello, Nate. Hi, Nate. Hello, boys. What are you doing in this neck of the woods? On the lamb? Nah, no, just sizing up a few things. That mug with the bag that was just in here, what do you want? Oh, nothing much. Just a bird down on his uppers. Hopped his gap. Yeah, do you mind if we take a gander on it? Yeah. Here, oh, yeah, help yourself. Hey, what's this mug to you? In front of us. Huh. What do you think of that? That's the rod the Chicago Police Commission gave him. Ain't that ironic? You know who'd like that for a souvenir? No, who? The boss. Yeah, he'd rather have this in the middle. How much, Nate? Well, since you and me is friends, Goldie, take it. Forty dollars. Twenty-five. Now, Goldie, in times like these, I can't afford a loss. But for you, thirty-five. Thirty. Only because I like you. Thirty-five. Thirty-two fifty. Okay, okay, so I don't pay the rent this month. Who cares? Take it. Thirty-four bucks. Sold. Hey, by the way, Nate, have you seen Louis Padroni around lately? Why? Oh, no reason. You know, old pals, we'd like to look him up. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I ain't seen him, but some of the boys say he might be stopping at the Midwestern Hotel. Midwestern, huh? Thanks, Nate. Who is it? It's us, boss. Call me in London. Hiya, boss. Hiya, boss. What are you two doing here? Well, you see, it's like this. When we got your telegram... Never mind that. Did you get rid of Doyle? Well, in a way, yes. What do you mean, in a way? Well, we got to think of... You know, it ain't healthy to knock off a report of the part of press and all that That's like... right. All I want to know is, did you get rid of him or didn't you? Well, we got rid of him, but... Yeah, well, how was we to know you was coming to St. Louis? What's that got to do with it? Well, you didn't say nothing about croaking the guy. So we stuck him in a train and shipped him out of town. Oh, well, that's okay. You boys had me worried for a minute. With him out of the way, I'm a cinch for an acquittal. Now all I got to do is pull one more job and get enough for the trial expenses but and then... You don't understand. No, he's here. We shipped him here to St. Louis. You what? Oh, wait a minute, boys. Don't get sore. We didn't know you was here. Oh, you stupid fools. Wait, we got a plan, boss. Look, hey, what's the idea? This is the gun that was given to Larry Doyle by the Chicago Police Commission. Get it? Yeah, you, you pull a job and then you plant the gun, see? And the cops find the gun. And who's the guy? You? No. Larry Doyle. Boys, I think you've got something. Doyle could never testify in Chicago if he's on the spot here in St. Louis, now could he? Boss, you're a smart man. Why, it's a cinch. What a spot. Goldie, you come with me. Knox, you stay here. This is the deadest place I've ever been in. You're right. My story dropped right into my lap. Go on down the street and get in a taxi and wait for me at the hotel. Oh, no, I'm going with you. You are not. Now, do as I tell you. Well, don't take any risks. Who, me? Don't be silly. Now, go on. Go Good on. luck on your story. Take this and be sure to meet me tomorrow at 5.30.
Calling all cars. Attention all cars. A hold up at the 13 Club. Two officers shot. Bandit got away in sedan, headed west from the 13 Club. Bring him in. That's all. Bronson. Bandit car seen turning south on 8th Street. So are you all right? Have I got a story? Police car 17 reports. Bandit car did not go beyond Elm Avenue on 8th Street going south. Keep your eyes open, Bronson. Of all the crazy things to do, Larry, they might have killed you. But they didn't. With this story, I'm going down to the news office and make Marvin eat crow. Oh, how about a little, uh, for luck? Help. Oh, no, you're not getting away again. Oh, but you've got to stay here and guard the money. But I can't trust you out alone. Now, you hide the money somewhere and I'll get my hat. Yes, this is Marvin talking. What? I thought you'd like to know. I just knocked off the 13 Club. You what? See if you can't trace that call on the other wire. Hurry. You're wasting your time. You can't trace it. Can't you hurry? Can't you hear me? How would you like your hold-up man this time? I haven't got enough on my hands. You're going into your dance again. Now you've got a partner. I'm no dancer. I'm bringing you the biggest story of the year, if you're smart enough to grab it. Why, he's a better newspaper man than anyone you've got on this paper. Quit it. He's a nut. Now get out of here, both of you. All right, I'm going to the dispatch. They'll know a story when they hear one. Well, you'll lose your job. A feature story signed by Larry Doyle will bust this town wide open. Yeah, but you're not Doyle. All right, suppose I'm not. I can turn up the stick-up artist. Lots of people have fallen down trying to do that. Uh, but they haven't seen him. I have. I'd believe anything if I could believe that. But I tell you, I have seen him. I could spot him out of a hundred men. Prove it. Oh, I will. But I'll have to be on salary first. All right. I'll take the chance. How much? Uh, never mind, Ann. Oh, darling, we're not giving things away. All right, all right. Sixty dollars a week. Get that bandit and you get a bonus. It's a bet. I'll get the district attorney on the wire. Tell him to take his staff over at the 13 Club. We'll be there as soon as he is. Get me Johnson, the district attorney, and hurry. If you're stringing me, your wife will take you home in a basket. Oh, but I'm not his... You get the district attorney and make a reputation for yourself. Come on, Ann. Hello, Johnson. This is Marvin talking. I got a hot tip on the 13 Club stick-up. One of my best men is on his way over. Meet him there. This is hot. You will? Right away? Good. Uh, his name, uh, Doyle. Larry Doyle. I hope. Well, this much we know. Officer O'Brien was wounded by the trigger man in the car, and he was killed by O'Brien. The bullet found in the trigger man's body convinces us of that. Right? Right. Now, Officer, you picked up Detective Riley? Yes. Well, how did you find him? Which way was he lying? Well, he didn't fall down. He was hanging on to that lamppost. Uh-huh. Well, the hospital surgeon found a bullet, didn't they? Yes, a 45. Well, uh, if Riley was found by that lamppost, he must have been shot from right about here. Sure, by the man in the car. No, no. The man in the car had a 32. We know that because his gun was found beside his body. Now, suppose the bandit starts out of the club with the money. He stops, sees Riley coming, and fires. Then he goes over to the, to the car, hands the money to someone, and they drive out. Now, suppose to cover up, he starts back into the club, but he still has the gun and it's hot. What would he do? Throw it away. Yes, but where? Let's look for it, men. Now, here it is. Ah, what did I tell you? Give it to me. <laughs> no doubt about it, it's a 45. No matter how clever they are, they always leave one clue. Well, you have your gun and your bullet. And the fingerprints. Now, gentlemen, all you have to do is find the owner of that gun, and you have your stick-up man. Well, let's go, men. No time to lose. Larry, that was your gun. Has Mr. Doyle come in yet? Yes, sir. He just went upstairs. You know, the more I think of it, the more exasperated I get for letting him put something over on me. A money order for $50 indeed. The way he talked, you'd think he was a millionaire. I'm going to throw him out. 
On second thought, you'd better come with me. Aren't we going to throw him out? Oh, no, emphatically not. I'm afraid we misjudged Mr. Doyle. $26,000 in cash, and me holding the bag. I discovered the stick-up gun, and it's my own. What a story, what a spot. Larry, nobody knows about the money but us, and as far as the gun's concerned, well, the fingerprints would have to be those of the stick-up man, not yours. That's right. Honey, you think of everything. Now, Larry, there's nothing we can do tonight, is there? Well, there certainly is. We're going down to that pawn shop and find out who got the gun. Oh, but it's been closed for hours, you know that. Yeah. Well, there's nothing we can do but wait till morning. What is it? It's... it's about this case. Sit down, please. I'm a pawnbroker near that gambling place where the policeman was shot. Go on. I see by the paper about the gun, the number and so on. Anyhow, just before it happened, a young fella comes in to sell me that same gun. That is interesting. What happened? I wouldn't buy it. Why not? Because he ain't got no identification. I get suspicious. So I take the number of the gun and his name and address. Here. Larry Doyle. Did he have a girl with him? Yeah. Well, there's no kidding about it. We've got a real job cut out for us. Oh, you'll win, Larry. No, you're a honey. Well, let's go. Oh, is the money safe? Oh, well, sure. I've got it locked up in the closet. Good. Come on. Yes? Larry Doyle? That's right. Hey, what is this? I am from headquarters. The district attorney would like to see you. Oh, well, fine. Well, I tell you what I'll do. I'll run on over to the newspaper office and then be right over. No, you better come now. Well, you run along, Mary. I'll wait here for you. No, the district attorney says you're to come along, too. Well, you didn't really think I was going to stay here, did you? No, ma'am. Convinced as I am of your analysis of the crime last night, Still, I'd like to make sure of a few minor details. Though they may not seem so important to you, I'd like to check up on a few of my own deductions. Now, as I recall, your deductions were that Officer O'Brien was wounded by the trigger man in the car, and he was killed by Officer O'Brien. The bullets found make us positively certain of that, right? Right. Now then, one thing you overlooked yesterday is something that we now know. Another man drove the car away. Find that man, and you find the gunman. Isn't that a reasonable supposition? Mm, yes, I suppose so. Well, check me if you find me going wrong. Doyle, it isn't possible, is it, that for the sake of a good story, you would withhold something that might be construed not as deductions, but as evidence? Well, a good newspaper man never reveals the source of his information. Oh, I'm not quarreling with your ethics. But I have my end of it, too. You appreciate that, don't you? Yes. All right. Well, now, for the sake of my own deductions, tell me something of your movements yesterday. Where were you between 1 o'clock and uh, approximately 1.30? Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh... You interviewed Marvin of the World News at 1.20. About that. Where were you before you went to the World News? You left the hotel at 1.05, and you had gone in there at 1 o'clock. That we know. Now, I suppose this all seems irrelevant to you. But it has its merits. At least I think so. Where were you last night, between 9 o'clock and, say, 12.20? We went several places. Oh, yes, we went to... Happened to drop in at the 13 Club? Yes. About what time? 
Oh, cut this out, will you? I'll... You have charge of the cloakroom at the 13 Club? Yes. Do you recognize this lady and gentleman? I do. Where did you see them last? At the 13 Club. I gave the gentleman his hat. Was the lady with him? Yes, sir. Did the gentleman say anything? <laughs> he remarked to the lady that he thought our joint was a dead one. But it ain't so dead if you've got the dough. Did the lady say anything? She agreed with him. What time was this? Oh, about 12.20. Thank you. That's all. Hey, boss, the district attorney has Doyle down in his office. All right, he knows how to get out. Uh, not today. The DA is putting the screws on him. What for? I suppose to grab our story. Yeah? I'll take care of that. Who does he think he is? The holdup occurred almost at the same time. Well, suppose it did. Doyle, the fingerprints on this steering wheel and those of yours we found in the hotel room are identical. Are you accusing me of... Uh... I am. Are you going to talk? Yes. Larry, tell him everything that happened. All right, the evidence you have is right, but I only did what any newspaper man would do in the same spot. We don't even know that you are a newspaper man, but we do know that you're not Larry Doyle. What are you trying to do, Johnson? Run my office. Then lay off my paper. What's the deal, Larry? I'm charged with the 13 Club stick-up. Have you gone crazy? No, I'm getting smart. First, who is he? What do you mean, who is he? Well, it certainly isn't Larry Doyle. Who said so? You did. You kicked him out once when Chicago said he was a fake. What do we do? Uh, uh, get Chicago. Get Jonas again. That's an idea. Get me Jonas, Chicago record. Remember, this was your own idea. Just get him. You're not thinking so fast today. Cut the jokes, Johnson. They're not funny. This call will be. Hello, Jonas, the record. This is Johnson, DA in St. Louis. Well, what do you want? An identification. Here. Yeah. Hello, Jonas. This is Marvin again, World News. It's about Larry Doyle. Yeah, let me talk to him. Hello, Chief. Look, I'm in a spot. And if you let me down this time, I'm through. Chief, I've got a great story, but it's kicked back on me. And my only out is to prove that I'm Larry Doyle. Now, put Johnson on. There. Johnson talking. Well, that's Doyle, Larry Doyle. He's a great boy. And you fellas stop kidding down there. Thank you. Goodbye. Now, are you satisfied? Well, I'm satisfied he's Doyle. But I'm also satisfied that I'm holding him. Come on, let me in on this. Well, here it is. And beside all this evidence, Doyle was the man who drove that car. Uh, it's part of the story. Are you right, Larry? Yes, but you've got to stick by me. That's good enough for me. We'll crack this story wide open. Let's go. Oh, no. He stays here. You to hold up my paper? Yes. I have my job to handle, too. But I'm guaranteeing him. Well, just give me a little time. I'll crack this case. No. You won't take my guarantee? No. I see. Maybe I don't pack the wallop. Then we'll get someone who can. If the managing editor can't talk sense to you, maybe the owner can. I'll play with you. Now, you keep your men out of this. Doyle gets a free hand. Are we set? I guess so. Huh? Yes. Come on, kid. Larry, when the man threw the bag into the car, what was it he said? He said, here, take this, and be sure and meet me tomorrow at 5.30. But he didn't say where. No. But the first thing we've got to do is get down to that pawn shop. And no dicks are going to stop us this time. Look. There's your 5.30. I'll redeem this. What's the matter? Can't you read your own writing? Uh, it's all blurred. Get the gun. Uh, my boy Johnny handles these things. He he'll be back in half an hour. Get the gun or do I have to come over the counter and get it? Uh, maybe it's in the safe. I'll see. We'll all see. Oh, I forgot. Johnny's got the combination. Come on, quit stalling. I'm not. No? I'm no getting tough. I haven't got it. Of course you haven't. 
Who'd you sell it to? I can't remember. Oh, oh open that door. Someone's coming. Oh. Uh, you stay here and I'll get rid of them. Well, fancy meeting you here. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Well, I meet lots of people. This uh, is a pawn shop, isn't it? That's right. What can I do for you? I'd like to see something in revolvers. Anything special? Yeah, a police special, 45. I'm sorry, but we don't seem to have one in stock. The district attorney has. Oh, really? That's what the papers say. What have you got in bags? Bags? Yeah, you know, bags with money in it. Oh, come on, Doyle, get smart. Maybe the district attorney has that, too. Well, that's too bad. Come on out here. Come on, get moving. We're gonna call on Nate. You know, Doyle? I'm going to give you another headline story. But this time, you won't be able to write it. Now, I'm telling you. Well, Scooper, they're right. Larry Doyle, the one and only. Oh, uh, yeah, but I'm in a jam. What is it now? Well, after all these nice things happen, then comes the earthquake. What is it? Tell me, what is it? Well, just this. They mentioned Mrs. Larry Doyle in those articles. Oh, is that all that's bothering you? Is that all? We're not married. So? Well, don't you understand? It means that I'll have to marry you. Oh, wouldn't that be awful? Um, how about a little, uh, for luck? <laughs> 